So that is in play right now. It settles just behind the mound. So the upper body of Philpot is in the sunshine. Everything else in the shadows as a throw to first happens. And back safely in plenty of time as Cam Smith. He's got two stolen bases on the year. The Seminoles do like to run. They've got 31 steals in their 22 games. Are they aware that Tanner Garrison is taking out six of the seven who've tried to steal on him? Yeah, he's been legit. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed watching the transfer from Coastal Carolina do the receiving. He is a absolutely great defensive catcher. 2-2 pitch is fouled off. That is over the third base dugout where the Seminoles stand up on the railing there, and they do not look good in their all garnet uniforms. From head to toe, it is red. The only gold is on the numbers. Phil Potts 2-2 again, hit out to center, a little jam job. Robertson's going to have to hurry to get there. It's in no man's land. Shelton couldn't get it either as he tried to get out there, and a blue base hit is going to give the Seminoles a couple of base runners. Well, Jeff, you mentioned how deep the outfield was, and this is a, not only quirky dimensions, this is a ballpark that plays very big. And so when you back up that outfield like the Gators did there, there's so much green in between a shifted infield and the deep outfielders. And after that easy opening to the start here for Philpot, traffic here with one out. So that'll bring up the cleanup man, Jaime Ferrer, right-handed hitter. And the first pitch is chopped over towards third, not hit hard either. Thomas comes to get it, tough play, and it's not going to be in time. So the last two Seminoles have just basically put the bat on the baseball, and it's been unlucky for the Gators. Really good pitch there by Philpot, but the Seminoles are going to have them loaded. That ball died initially hitting that turfus slash dirt area in front of home plate. It's not hard. It was dead and pretty quick. So now Daniel Cantu, left-handed hitter, steps in there with the bases loaded, and a first pitch breaking ball is a little high and off the plate for ball one. Cantu's hitting 368, transfer from USF. Has just one homer on the year, but he lines this one down the right field line, and that's going to find the corner. Two runs will easily score. We'll see how Evans can get the ball in, how quickly. Curlin's got it now. Here comes a relay throw. It is not in time either, and Cantu just clears the bases with a first inning double. Strayman's really going to have to bear down as he faces Marco Dingus, a right-handed hitter. Phil Potts lost as a coach com. His first pitch is high and tight. He brushes Dingus back off with a first pitch fastball. So four hits now in the inning after a leadoff strikeout. And the Gators' struggles in inning number one during the midweek continue. The Seminoles had no problem swinging the, the bat in Clemson over the weekend. They had an 8-1 lead in their Saturday game. Gave up eight runs in the ninth inning to lose 9-8. And then they had an 11-2 lead and gave that up on Sunday. Fastball, that's a pop-up. Out to right field. Curlin says he's got it just behind the infield dirt. He will haul it in for out number two. Yeah, they they um, they went to Clemson, like you said, and like, had no problem swinging the bat. Yet, but the deflation that they must have felt blowing those two leads like that and to come home with their first three losses of the year. They don't seem bothered by it here in the first. Nope, not at all. Back to a lefty, it's Drew Ferro. And the first pitch to him is hit foul down the left field line where all the party goers will be hanging out tonight. They've got a, a Tiki Terrace down there just behind the wall in left field. It's first come, first serve, and that's the first seat that ended up getting eaten up tonight. There's a good fastball for strike two on the outer part of the plate. Froze hitting 333, just a homer, and 11 runs driven in. He had three hits against the Gators in the first meeting, so you got to be really careful with him. And that changeup is down low for ball one.
Philpot ready, and this one is grounded out towards Curlin at second. He's got it on three hops. His throw is good, and that will retire the side. And third straight game now that the Gator shortstop has let off. So the left-on-left -left matchup, and the first pitch is a little bit low for ball one. At least here in the early going, Damian Beal with a pretty tight strike zone. Armstrong stands on the third base side of the rubber and misses off the plate with another fastball. So Shelton quickly ahead, two balls and no strikes. Shelton had really been struggling. He was 0 for 10 against LSU and then finally got things going in his second at bat on Sunday. 2-0 pitch is a swing and a miss on a good fastball. Shelton got things going with a single and then the next two at bats after that, both two run homers. So let's hope that that gets him going. 2-1 pitch is off the plate on a changeup. So Shelton ahead on the count, three balls and a strike. I kind of thought that this might be the solution at the leadoff spot. You know, Robertson has started to struggle a little bit. Curlin is still coming back from the hand injury. Yep. So I started to think, who could be a candidate there? And it's a guy that gets on base, yeah. just and like right it. there. And, and the only thing I was basing that on, Jeff, was the fact that at the time I started thinking about this was last week, midweek against Jacksonville was that I think at the time he had a 20-game on base streak working. And I thought, well, okay, if we just use that indicator alone, maybe he is the next likely candidate to be at the top of that lineup. Yeah, he and Heyman both had 20-game on base streaks to start the year. Both of those ended on Friday night at LSU, but then got him going on Saturday and Sunday. Well, this guy has been going for a while, and let's hope he keeps it that way as Ty Evans steps to the plate. He'll take a fastball off the plate for ball one. Armstrong only walked one in three innings against the Gators in the first meeting, but already a leadoff walk here. Evans was really, really good over the weekend as he awaits the pitch, and he takes that one down low for ball two. Evans now, in the last two years against Florida State pitching, has 13 hits. Well, he's got... Quite a run going right now with 11 multi-hit games in his last 13. Yep. So if both those numbers hold true, be another big night for Ty Evans. There's ball three. Yeah, I think we could uh, call it. Ty Bo is his nickname for those that don't know. Ty Bo is a, likes the Ty Guz, the T-Y. Well, Armstrong can't throw a strike, so he's just got to stand there. And he does it again. That one called the strike at the knees, the very bottom part of the strike zone. Evans has hit in all but two games this year. He's got a hold of the right side as Shelton gets his lead. First baseman holds him on. And the pitch is lined right over the second baseman's head. That's out into the gap in right center. Shelton will touch second, head over to third, and Tybo stays hot. And the Gators trying to answer right back with runners on the corners and nobody out. Yeah, that's a big... Opportunity now for Florida to answer the three spot in the top half of the inning. And what I'm hoping, and we talked about this before the first pitch, this this moment in time, this pivot point for the Gators, is that unlike in the first meeting against Florida State that they won handily, you have an answer. At least you feel like you're more prepared to answer any salvo from the Seminoles right now. now here's Jack Caglione. They'll shift on him as well for the left-on-left -left matchup, and first pitch breaking ball is nowhere close. Cags was one for five in the first meeting, but he had six hits against the Seminoles last year. There's a fastball, and he jams him, but it's foul down the first baseline. How about an OPS right now of 1.211 <laughs> for Jack Caglione? But some of these video game numbers we get now with him, and basically right now you could say that about the top five guys in the lineup to some extent. Ball and a strike to the lefty, and there's a fastball that almost hit him. Tried to chase him back off the plate. Cags at 394, 11 homers. That's one behind... Shelton's 12 for the team lead. Of course, two big homers over the weekend, none bigger than the one in the 11th inning that helped the Gators win on Saturday. This ball is hit pretty well out towards the left field line. Ferrer is going to drift over. The ball's carrying, and it's going to carry out of the yard. How about that? That was a pop-up, and we told you about that win. It's another jack for Jack. 
his 12th of the year, and just like that, we are all tied at three apiece. A Caglione souvenir. And the Gators answer just like that. Here's Tyler Shellnut in the cleanup spot. And he'll take a breaking ball for strike one. And they've already got Joe Charles, a right-hander, up in the Seminoles bullpen. Breaking ball again, and it's backdoored for strike two. Good pitch on the outer part of the plate. Shellnut hitting 313 on the year. He's got eight homers and 25 runs driven in. 0-2 pitch is wasted away on a fastball. So Cags now takes over the team lead in RBI with 27. The one-two pitch, breaking ball down in the dirt. And things are starting to get good for Cags in the home run department. He's got seven homers now in the last nine games. The amount of time that it's taken for him to get north of 50 career home runs is staggering. Yep. That's 52 now in his career. And he's in sole possession of the top five as Shellnut fouls one off. He tied J.J. Schwartz at LSU. And it, it is pretty – it's not even two years yet no. of, of what he's done. And all the guys ahead of him, at least three years, if not four years. Fastball, swing and a miss as Shellnut chases one on the outer part of the plate. So there's the first out here in the bottom of inning number one. Now, look, Caglione's college career is going to come to an end here this summer. So he won't have the three or four years yep. that those guys had. He's got he's to hurry up. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy because you, you could see early on teams weren't pitching to him. Here's Heyman. He fouls off the first pitch, fastball off of his front foot. But Jack has done such a good job of being patient and you're starting to see some other guys in the lineup do some things, so you're, you're forced to pitch the Cags a little bit more, and he's making these teams pay. So you were in Baton Rouge, so I want your eyeballs to tell me what I was trying to see on TV. At er times, Heyman looked not right, yep. uncomfortable, not himself, and then sure enough, he delivered. Yep. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, he had been 0 for 10 before getting a, a huge double in that game as he takes one down low. And it helped the Gators get the lead on Sunday. Yeah, I just think I think that's what baseball is. There, there's going to be times where you struggle. you got to figure some things out. One, two pitch is a breaking ball down in the zone. But eventually, these guys are such good hitters that they will, in fact, make it happen. Two balls and two strikes now to the right-handed hitter, and Heyman misses the changeup. So he goes down. Second straight strikeout for Armstrong. So just like Philpot, who seemingly gave up three runs in a hurry in the top for, of the first, same goes here for Armstrong. Gives up three runs and then settles in. Well, Kate Curlin was a guy just like Luke Heyman. All the struggles in the world, and all of a sudden, figured it out as he takes a good fastball for strike one on the outer part of the plate. Friday night against LSU, Curlin struck out in all four at-bats as he drills one right back to the mound, and that is caught by Armstrong. Wow. Evan facing 8-9-1 and one in the seminal order, and the first pitch is hit out to right field by Jackson West, and that's going to fall in front of Ty Evans. Evans and right fielder, that sun field. So Evan has the uh, sunglasses on. Maybe didn't see that all too well off the bat. Either way, it's a leadoff single. So five hits already now through the first eight hitters for Florida State. And the nine-hole hitter, Alex Lodes, steps into the right-handed batter's box. First pitch is a little high and tight for ball one. Lodi's a 284 hitter with five homers, 20 runs driven in. Swings and misses a fastball. Lodi's a transfer from North Florida. Went to high school at Bartram Trail. As he awaits the 1-1, one -one, and that is hit down the right field line again. Evans is going to try to run it down. Still trying to get there, but he won't. And that will fall into the Gator bullpen, which is just like LSU, just off the field of play here. So you'll be able to see everybody warming up 
on both sides, and the Seminoles still have a right-hander warming up. Speaking of Bartram Trail, where Lodis is from, they came to Gainesville last night and lost to Buholtz High School. Who pitches for Buholtz? Uh, a few people. Okay. One, Austin Cardozo, my son. But, yeah, they're uh, they're off to a, a good start. That was a big win. Bartram Trail's 7A, so a bigger school over here in Jacksonville. So Lodis is basically back home here playing as he gets ready for the 2-2 pitch. And it's another pop-up. This one should be in play. Curlin says he's got it. And he will call off Jack Caglione just beyond the infield dirt and catch it for out number one. He's got the toughest field right now with the way the shadows are. You had Cage playing with the sunglasses on his hat, not on his face. So it must be too dark to peer into the plate, but yet when he goes for the baseball in that cut, I'm sure he would love to have the old flip-down sunglasses. Yeah, remember those? Those were cool. Yep. Got to be of a certain age to remember that. <laughs> All right, back to the top of the order, and Max Williams, a lefty, and he hits a towering shot. Curlin's going to have another opportunity, this time in the infield dirt, closer to shortstop. He's got it with ease for out number two. So, yeah, the sunglasses are just for looking cool at this point for it, Cade. Yes. Good in theory. I'm standing in the sun. When I look in the sky, I see sun. But if I look toward home plate, no help. But that's what Cade does. He'll be wearing them at 9 o'clock tonight, too. Oh, Rivera was that way last year as well. Yep. Remember the SEC tournament was like midnight or something, and Rivera still had sunglasses <laughs> on his hat. Here's a very dangerous Cam Smith, and he'll take a first pitch fastball on the inner part of the plate. A good pitch there by Philpot, who's been somewhat unlucky with the three runs, but he has given up a couple of hard hit baseballs, including one to this guy back in the first inning, a hanging breaking ball that Smith lined into left field. That brought his average now up to 453 with eight homers and 25 runs driven in. Jeff, he's so far up in the batter's box. When he steps, he's technically out the front side. 1-1 one, one pitch is hit well out to straightaway center field, right where Robertson was playing, though. This will step in first and take a first pitch strike. Good fastball on the inner part of the plate. Armstrong threw 27 pitches, just 14 strikes. Gave up the two hits and a walk. Did strike out two, and then almost got decapitated by Cade Curlin, but he made a really nice play to finish up the inning. But that finished up his night as Thomas takes this one a little bit low. No, I'll hit for average, Jeff. There's, I mean, Tony yeah. Gwynn was pretty good at pretty that. Pretty good at that. Thomas hitting 203, so just above the Mendoza line with a couple of homers, swings and misses at a good breaking ball. And the breaking ball is something he's struggled with here. We, they, Saw a steady diet of that over the weekend in Baton Rouge. I'll tell you what, though. Dale Thomas today, really the first couple of groups for the Gators had a tremendous batting practice. There was great energy. I just remember a week ago. One, two pitch misses in. Yeah, you know, against Jacksonville, there was some off before mm -hmm. the game. And a lot of times that doesn't translate. It did. So I'm hoping today it translates again. So we'll take great energy before the game. And I thought the response in the bottom of the first was, was great. 2-2 two -two pitch, breaking ball, got him. Caught the outer part of the plate. Thomas didn't agree with it. So we'll have some words for Damian Beal, but head back to the dugout. I'm not real surprised that Armstrong only lasted the one inning. I think they were only going to go two, and then he got into some trouble. This resulting in the one frame for Armstrong. And, and that is the difference in a lot of these midweek games and, and people trying to understand, well, you're not throwing your best pitchers, and then you're also wanting to save pitchers for the weekend when need be as Tanner Garrison steps in, takes a breaking ball high for ball one. So you, you'll never really see a lot of guys go far that are needed on the weekends. There's a good breaking ball for a strike, and that will even things up at one and one. Garrison's making his fourth consecutive start. He started 11 games now for the Gators. And he started every SEC game behind the plate. And they're treating him like he's Babe Ruth. Another breaking ball misses in. This is a guy hitting 188 with no homers. So Garrison with the advantage in the count now. They play him straight away. And the 2-1 pitch is a fastball for strike two. Good pitch. He ran into a couple last year at Coastal Carolina. I mean, he's got 
some pop. Yeah. But he's certainly a, an asset behind the plate. And that's why he's in there. 2-2 two -two pitch now. Breaking ball is pop up. Down the left side, it'll drift into foul territory, and now about seven rows into the stands. Koneka Sausage is always great on the grill, a fan favorite for tailgating and a proud partner of the Florida Gators. Koneka Sausage is made from the finest cuts of pork and smoked, pure hickory fire. That true southern flavor always comes through. Pick up a pack at your local grocer and enjoy a Koneka so Sausage dog while watching the Gators. 2-2 pitch again to Garrison. He was able to check his swing. For those that don't know, my partner is a uh, grand griller. So I'm sure you've uh, thrown a few things on the grill that are pretty darn good. And uh, a Koneka sausage appetizer is not a bad way to go either. Not at all. So the count full. Now on the Gator catcher. And it's a pop-up again. This one should stay in the field of play. Cam Smith drifts into foul territory and now almost back into foul territory, but he'll catch it behind the bag for out number two. Schedule's been unkind to the grilling uh, process here lately. Agreed. Yes. But now down to one sport instead of the two. For the moment, yeah. Yeah, you still have uh, some other work going on. So the thing is that, you know, is my grilling days this time of year not normal in my neighborhood? Yeah. Here's Michael Robertson, first pitch swinging. He hits one out to left. Ferrer, though, drifting back. That ball continued to carry, so the wind's really helping, but he'll catch it right on the edge of the warning track. It'll be an easy 1-2-3 inning quarter for Florida State. And Sean Kelly to the microphone. Thank you, Jeff. James Tibb steps in on the left side. He is one for one tonight. Seminole right fielder. Singleton scored back in the first, and he takes ball one low from Philpott. Sent some bodies down to the Florida Gators bullpen. We're not quite sure how long they want Philpott to go tonight. Swinging a line drive into right and picked up off the turf here for an out. It's Ty Evans. That was a sinking line drive out to right field. And talk about taking it off the shoe top. That's basically what Evans did. And I'm wondering now if Florida State wanted to challenge whether this was a catch or not. Yeah, and... Florida State is one to challenge the call here of an out. It well, was made by the second base umpire, Jeff Gosney. And, and they flashed the replay, and, and it allowed Link Jarrett to look at it up on the, the scoreboard, the big screen, out in left center field. And then he immediately went out and said that he wanted to challenge it. So I'm not sure if you're, you're really supposed to, to do that and allow them to, to see the replay. But still, on that, it did look like Ty Evans was able to, to get it right before it scraped the ground. We don't have a monitor here. In fact, we don't have kind of the normal toys that we would have, say, whether it be in Tallahassee or Gainesville. We're at a minor league ballpark tonight. And, yes, there is a television broadcast. And hello to all of you watching on SEC+. Plus. You've got the Florida Gators radio network for your audio tonight. So it's kind of pieced together to be able to deliver a television broadcast but the umpires have disappeared below us as this play is under review on a challenge by Florida State. Tibbs kind of got it off the end of the bat, but he was around it quick enough on it to shoot it out to Evans, who was a bit surprised at first. And that review didn't take very long. And the ruling stands. Tibbs is out. So, Jeff, your eagle eyes picked up the backhanded catch just off the grass there by Evans, one gone, and that's the second time tonight Philpott has retired the leadoff hitter in the inning. So that'll bring up Jaime Ferrer, the left fielder, also one for one tonight. Got aboard with a swinging bunt his first time up. And he takes strike one here from Alex Philpott. Between innings, it kind of got, we got one cloud to come over, but now that's gone, and so the sun's in the right field. And that one is dug out of the dirt by Gary, as his teammates call him, Tanner Garrison, the Gators catcher. Thomas is a couple of steps behind the bag, a third toward the line. And a breaking ball misses away here from Philpott. Two balls and one strike to Ferrer, with one gone in the top of the third. 3-3 three, three the score. Philpott from the belt, kicks and delivers. And that's a ground ball right through the third base coach's box. Look out. 
right through the Seminoles' bullpen and has to be retrieved on the fair side of the left field line. No wonder Thomas is guarding the line, and now he's taking another couple of steps back after that swing by Ferrer. Shelton, the shortstop's on the cut of the grass. This one has popped up, wouldn't you know it, into right field. Evans fighting the sun, drifting to his left, is there, and he's got the second out. Well, you, you got to really appreciate what Phil Pott's doing. Could have gotten rattled after that first inning, gives up the triple, clears the bases. All of a sudden, you, you feel like you haven't even started yet, and it's 3 nothing. But he's gotten a lot of weak contact since that moment, even in some weak contact in that first inning. Yes. So he's handling himself well. Well, here's the guy that did the damage back in the first, Daniel Cantu, the first baseman. His doubles played at three runs. And that's fouled straight back. Cantu shot it down into the right field corner. Ended up with a double. His 13th, 14th, and 15th runs batted in on the year. Jeff told you back in the first, this team's hitting 344 as a ball club. Their slugging percentage at 601. The 0 one just off the outside edge of the plate. One ball, one strike, two gone, nobody on. Infield back, Shelton has tore the second base bag, and Thomas now well off the line for the left-handed hitter. And that one dies inside. Well, the, the Gators haven't gotten Cantu out this year. He, he was three for three in the opener, the, the hit earlier, so you had to figure out how to do it. 2-1 pitch, swinging a foul straight back. He just missed that one. Evens the count of two balls and two strikes. And with that, Robertson in center field will straighten up even more. The wind is blowing across Robertson from his left cheek to his right. It is whistling out to the left field foul pole. Phil Pod deals the 2 2. Popped up, foul. This will get out of play down the left side. Thomas will give it a look, but that's way up on the berm. And a souvenir here on a 3-3 game in the top of the third inning. Phil Potts not even letting Thomas get back to the infield. Now Dale's ready. And Garrison <laughs> says you can go ahead to Alex Phil Potts. Oh, kick and deliver. 2-2. Swinging another pop fly. Left side of the infield this time. Shelton calls off Thomas. And out in the grass makes the camp. Shelton steps in. Top of the order for the Gators. He'll face right-hander Joe Charles for the first time. First pitch to Shelton here is a little tall for ball one. Charles came into the second. In relief for the starter, Andrew Armstrong. Got a little Johnny Holstaff tonight from the Seminoles. Charles came in and set the Gators down one, two, three in the second. The pitch. In the dirt, that caught some of the umpire. Damon Beal needs a moment. I don't know how that got through West, the catcher, as it did. But that caught Beal, and he's in some discomfort, and uh, as is custom. West will walk out to the mound here and give Beal a moment to gather himself. Yeah, that, that's the cool part uh, about baseball because you know there's a lot of back and forth moments between the catcher and the umpire. A lot of times probably the catcher doesn't like that guy behind him, but anytime one of the two get hit, they uh, they make up, they hug, and you just saw it right there and saying, hey, I got you. My bad. Same courtesy granted when it's flipped around, as you mentioned. Shelton walked his first time up, and he takes strike. One right down central. That's the one walk so far for the Gators. Jack Caglione's three-run home run in the first is how Florida has scored tonight. And next to Shelton, swinging a foul straight back. Colby's batting 3-11 up to the minute. Been three strikeouts already for the Gators tonight. That was one thing that folks were talking about with regard to the series in Baton Rouge, the high strikeout numbers. And I don't disagree but I'll throw this out there as Shelton fouls this one away. LSU pitching, that's that's been their hallmark this season. Their strikeout numbers are really high, so it wasn't just the Gators struck out a bunch. Everybody's been striking out a bunch against LSU, although my partner will tell me that, rightfully so, 16's too many in a game. Swing at a foul tip, just got a piece of it, and West unable to hang on keeps... Colby Shelton alive, two balls and two strikes. But I do think that's what you have to enjoy about what the Gators were able to do. 16 in the first game, 16 again in the second game, yet resilient enough to, to win and be able to have quality at bats when they needed to. Chance to stay with it. Charles looks into the uh, third base dugout. That's where the Seminoles reside tonight. Both pitchers have had some pitch comm communication device problems. Swing and a fly ball. This is out into center field. Williams waited on it, now comes in two steps and puts it away. 
Shelton retired for the first time tonight. One gone here in the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, good pitch there by Charles. It's tough to get in on Colby Shelton, and he did a really nice job of doing that. Mixed it in, out, both sides of the plate, and inevitably got a, a weak swing. Well, there's room to run out there in center field for Williams and for Robertson both. It's about 420 to dead center here. It's a cave as Ty Evans swings and misses on a breaking ball. Nothing in one to Evans, who singled his first time up. So can Evans make it 12 multi-hit games? And now will be 14. Swing and a miss. Bottom fell out of that one. And a hole here for Evans to work out of it. Nothing in two. They'll play him straight up on the infield. Same for the on-field. Maybe a little more shallow and right for Tibbs. Right-handed hitting Ty Evans. Ready for the 0-2 pitch. In the dirt. One ball, two strikes. There are Seminoles at the ready in the left field bullpen. Charles comes set. He pitches from the stretch whether anybody's on or not. Swing a foul straight back. Boy, Evans just missed that one. Yeah, he, he hung that one. And there are four pitches now haven't given anything to Evans. Nothing hard, all breaking balls. You know, it's an odd thing. Florida's the home team tonight. So they have certain responsibilities in quote-unquote hosting. Pitch, swing, and a miss. And Evans, a little tardy on that one, is out number two. Yeah, and that's what's good by, by Charles there. You, you have the four breaking balls. You sort of lull him to sleep and then expecting probably another one. He got a fastball on the inner part of the plate. So that's how he's gotten the last two hitters running fastballs in. So with two outs, here's Jack Cangaleone, who hit the three-run home run down the left field line his last time up. And the first two of them is all the way back to the uh, bricks. So when you're the home team, you have certain responsibilities. I didn't think the Gators would have to bring their own bases to the ballpark tonight, but they did. Wow. Uh, bases on this field right now only reside at Condren Ballpark as Charles misses down and in. The reason being is in pro baseball, we play with a different size base now. And so, 1-2-1 Financial Ballpark does not have the correct size bases for college baseball. The next to Kags, Steve Reich on the outside corner. Jack thought about it, got a little hitch, and then he paused. It's 2-1. and one. They've shifted to the right side of the infield for Jack Caglione. Charles kicks and deals. Swinging a ball, lifted into right field. Tibbs on the run toward the track. It's one hop off the bottom of the wall. Caglione will have a stand-up double here into the right center field gap with two gone in the bottom of the third inning. It's just amazing how strong he is. And for those getting to watch on television that, that don't normally get to see Jack Caglione, the, the, the way the ball comes off the bat is just unlike anything that I think many people can do. He hit a homer against LSU, 116 off the bat. It was only a 16-degree launch angle. He basically one-handed that thing and it short-hopped the wall. It's like... You ever hit a, a racket ball with a metal bat? That's what it feels like, it yeah. looks like. So now Tyler Shelnut, he's 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. Maybe a little two out magic here for the Gators with Kags leading from second. Up and away is the first fastball from Charles. Misses for ball one. Shelnut's batting 458 with runners in scoring position. Deep in the box on the right side. Check of the runner, and the pitch bounces in the dirt. West is able to keep it in front of him to his left, and Caglione will stay there at second base. Double barrel action right now in the Seminoles' bullpen. They kind of hit the pause button for a bit, but then after the double here with two outs by Caglione, they're up and running now. Do I have this right? The cleanup hitter for the Gators is also your stolen base leader right now, Tyler Shelnut? Pretty crazy. How often do you see that? The pitch. Swing and a miss. Big cut there by Shelnut. One up in the zone. Just shows you got to pick the right times to steal because Shelnut is not the fastest of sorts. No, but he's four for four. Yeah. The 2-1 pitch. Just missed inside. Went with the fastball there, trying to get underneath the hands of Shelnut. And now three and one, and Luke Heyman would love to have a chance here in the bottom of the third. He's on deck for the Gators. Charles comes set. No check of the runner. Deals. Breaking ball in the outside corner. That'll run it full here on Tyler Shelnut. Well, 3-1 breaking ball. You would think 3-2 uh, breaking ball. 
Shona gets a little closer to the plate. Swing and a miss, there it is. The breaking ball is what got him. Together. Marco Dingius up there on the right side with an open stance to start things in the Florida State fourth. Philpot deals and puts it right down the heart for strike one. Dingius, the designated hitter for the Seminoles. 0 for 1 tonight. Popped up to Curland. Back in the first. Philpot misses here. We're even a ball and a strike, and we see our first activity in the Gators' bullpen tonight. As Philpot kind of had the lengthy first inning, but has settled in since. Kicking a pitch. Swing and a foul straight back by Dingus. Yeah, just 44 pitches through the first three innings after throwing 25 in the first, who has really settled down nicely and throwing a lot of strikes. I think that's the important part tonight. Transfer from Tallahassee Community College. Dingus ready. And that one bounces in front of the plate. He's got a highlighter orange bat. Reminds me of old school softball bat. I'm not talking about the kind the Gators play. I'm talking about the, the keg of beer in the dugout kind of softball bat. The pitch. Swing, and he slaps one into center. Robertson to his right is there to make the catch. All kinds of spin on it. Robertson played it well, coming toward the gap in left center, one away. Well, and I think, you know, that's the, the third outfield spot that Kevin O'Sullivan is rotating people through, Jalen Guy, and then, of course, Robertson, who, who made that great catch in Omaha last year to help the Gators get to the national championship game. He plays a really good defense, just gets – Phenomenal jumps, and it was evident right there. Now Drew Ferro, a left-handed batter with one out, and dancing away from the pitch inside is Ferro. He grounded out his first time up to the right side of the in infield. Curlin was busy for a stretch there in the bottom of this order. This one is skied into left field. Shelna to the track to the scoreboard, reaches, it hits the top of the wall, and it is ruled a home run. It's mm. gone. Ferro hits just his second home run of the year. I thought Shelnut was able to reach up. That's about seven feet where the fence out there below the scoreboard and left, and it hit the very top of the wall and gives Florida State the lead four to three. Yeah, there's that wind again. That ball again was a ball that would have been caught on a normal day and just kept carrying because of the wind. And Shelnut got back there, remember, not used to this park, and it drifted a little bit more on him to kind of make the jump a little bit harder where he had to do it with his back instead of leaping out to his left, and that allowed him to not get as much on the jump. Now Jackson West, he tried to slash a bunt to start his second appearance of the night and fouled it off. Eight spot in the lineup, West singled his first time up. And he sends one into that breeze down the left field line. Shelton to the track, to the wall. It is foul, says the third base umpire, Jason Bradley. One by much. Ooh. Just to the left of the, uh, the foul pole there. And that one well up into the Tiki Terrace. So the party is getting a lot of action oh, yeah. tonight. And any fly ball to left right now gonna go. is a hold your breath moment. And these lefties are the ones really taking advantage of that going opposite field. Ryan Slater has been up and throwing in the Gators bullpen. So 4-3 now with one out in the top of the fourth. The pitch. It's over but low. One ball, two strikes here to Jackson West. 343 hitter. West is their catcher. And he shoots one through the right side. A ground ball base hit. He's two for two tonight. Well, breaking ball just got too much of the plate. Trying to throw that little back foot. And it was out over the plate. And Kevin O'Sullivan now walks and 23 strikeouts. 2-0 and with a 3 2 earned run average. He'll face right-hander Alex Lodi's the nine-hole hitter, the seminal shortstop. And he'll work from the stretch with a runner on at first. First pitch swinging. Lodi's shoots that one straight back into the net. New baseball for Slater. Philpot went... Three and a third, he is responsible for West, who's leading from first base. Did not walk anybody. Philpott recorded one strikeout. Pitch from Slater. Perfect. Nothing in two here to Lodi's. Top of the order coming up here for Florida State. 
barring a double play ball. The Gators have turned nine double plays this year, and that was a, a helper against the LSU Tigers this past weekend. That one's in the dirt, and Garrison does a great job of keeping that in front. One ball, two strikes. We talked earlier about Tanner Garrison and the fact that he has caught six of seven would-be base stealers. Jeff, the other thing I've enjoyed about watching Garrison is I think truly he has grabbed some strikes for the pitching staff. With the way that he receives the baseball, he's able to work the edges of the zone. He's just a very, very pretty receiver. Tags holding that runner on the pitch. Ground ball to second. Might be two. Kerwin will throw to first instead and gets Lodis. Kerwin got the right hop. Waist high. He was moving to his left. He would have had to flip his shoulders to get the lead runner. I thought he could have had it. Yeah, Jack. that's a play he's got to. you got to get the lead runner there, especially with the top of the order coming up. So a uh, uh, wasted opportunity there. The momentum was taking him towards first base, but I mean, very easy to just kind of turn your body and – pivot over to second base. And now you got Max Williams up at the top, 0 for 2, but a runner in scoring position. Slater checks that runner and deals. Swing and a base hit right through the hole on the left side, and sure enough, that run's going to come around to score. RBI for Williams on his first hit of the night. West scores easily from second. Yeah, it's a little, it's five, little things in baseball, Sean. It's not going to show up in the box score. It's going to now go in as an earned run, and it's a run that shouldn't have happened. It should be first and second or at most or at worst first and third for the Seminoles. Yeah. So now Cam Smith, the two-hole hitter, one for two. Slater throws over to first, diving back in. There is Williams. Williams does have two stolen bases on the year. Picked up his ninth RBI of the season. Here with two outs. Smith ready on the right side, the pitch. Inside fastball, ball one. Smith singled in the first inning and then ended up being the first run of the game on either side. Flying out to center is next time up, that end of the inning in the second. The next from Slater. Swinging a well-hit fly ball into right. Evans up near his chin, drifting to his right. Was able to put it away. That got out there in a hurry. But some damage for Luke Heyman. Did so in the first the same way. Heyman's a right-handed hitter, and the first to him is down and away from ball one. Smith, the third baseman, is deep and toward the line. Lodi's the shortstop, is basically in that six hole over there on the left side. And they have a staggered first baseman, second baseman on the right side of the infield. Swinging a one hopper to the third baseman. Smith's got it. And throws across to retire Heyman to begin the bottom of the fourth. And the positioning was perfect. They had him over towards the line, and that ball just a few feet off the line. So an easy play for Cam Smith. It's the kind of shift we see now or movement we see in Major League Baseball where they're no longer to shift to one side or the other. You see a little bit more of that. So maybe that's where Link Jarrett got the idea on some of these right-handed hitters. And another right-hander steps in, and Cade Curlin, the Gators' second baseman. First to him. Is way outside for ball one. Cade lined one right back to the mound his first time up. Bot knocked Armstrong off his feet to end the inning. Three runs on three hits for Florida. Kick and a pitch. Swing and a, another ground ball to third. Smith vacuums it up, throws off the bag, but a tag made at first by Cantu. Cantu put the leather down on Cade Curlin. I thought Smith got a little cute with his throw and pulled Cantu off the bag to the plate side. Yeah, did a good job with his footwork to go over and get it, and then the, the cuteness came from that, that sidearm toss. For, for Gator fans, you see that a lot from Curlin, and sometimes the ball just runs on you. That's exactly what he did. It's got a lot more distance to get across the entire length of the infield, and it sailed to the right. And a good job by Cantu to go get it. Well, here's an old Chuck Geralaman move right here. Gators assistant coach has called time to talk to Dale Thomas and uh, also to slow down things here. Two quick outs in the bottom of the fourth, pair of ground outs to the third baseman. This will allow the pitcher and catcher to get a little bit more of a breath and maybe try and get into the rhythm of John Abraham a bit. Well, Thomas struck out looking his first time up. Breaking ball got him back in the first inning, or the top of the second. <laughs> bottom of the second, beg your pardon. Thomas in and ready on the right side. 
Uh, pitch to him from Abraham is down and in for ball one. Kind of at that tough time of night to see now. Twilight is upon us in Jacksonville. The next pitch to Thomas. Breaking ball, thumbed it in there for strike one. Kind of a haze now. Out beyond the right field wall toward the ocean. The next to Thomas. Just a bit low. West tried to glove it up into the zone a little bit. Not fooled was Damian Beal, the home plate umpire. 5-3 Florida State. Sean and Jeff here with you from Jacksonville tonight. Big full crowd at this beautiful ballpark. 2-1 pitch. Chopping round ball to the shortstop. Lodis throws again off the bag and another tag applied by Cantu to get ahead first sliding Dale Thomas. He saw the throw coming away from the bag. And Slater, the big lefty, steps in and first pitch hacking like he normally does. He'll foul off a ball over the Seminole dugout down the third base line here in Jacksonville. Tibbs a 388 hitter. He's got a single and almost a double, but Ty Evans made a great play his last time up as Slater's changeup misses down below the zone. Tibbs has got a lot of pop. He's got more homers than anybody else on that team in his career against the Gators, but he pops this one up here. See what the wind does with it. Now in foul territory down the third base line. Thomas is looking, but it's good four or five rows deep into the stands. Yeah, and a couple Seminole fans just didn't make a play at it. Nope. It's kind of sitting there. Got to go after it. At least the good part is nobody had a glove over there over the age of 18. Not allowed to do that. It's kind of like wearing another man's jersey. That's right. One, two. Unless it's a hockey jersey, Unless right? Unless it's a hockey jersey. That's my, that's my only exception to the rule. For okay, some reason. Good. You picked up on that, have you? I think so. Yep. But you looked really good in your uh, hockey jersey earlier this year. Oh, Tibbs is going to get plunked with a fastball right between the two and two on his back, and that's going to hurt as Tibbs is going to be a leadoff base runner. But – Congratulations to that Florida hockey team. National champs. How about that? Say it loud, say it proud. For the first, you know, that club has been in existence since I think the mid 90s, and they finally win their first national championship. Pretty cool. No, I wore that, I wore that jersey, or as they say in the hockey world, I wore that sweater with pride to one of the home basketball games. I have to break it out for one baseball game. Yeah, I would let you. I'm just not going to let you wear a uh, break out a, a basketball jersey. The tank top would not be a good look. No, sir. <laughs> Here's Jaime Ferrer, a right-handed hitter. First pitch is a little off on that Slater slider. Well, Tibbs has always been tough on the Gators. Had 17 homers a year ago. Continues to just get on base time and time again as Slater misses down low again. The Gators have a couple more arms starting to throw down in their bullpen. Frank Menendez, a left-hander, and Blake Purnell, a righty. This one's fouled off, and it's two balls and a strike now straight behind home plate. Surely there was a jersey you wore when you were a kid. If any of them, it would have been Cal Ripken. That was, uh, that was my guy until Craig Maddox became the man. 2-1 pitch is a pop-up. On the infield, who's going to call it? Dale Thomas says he wants it, so everybody else backs off. And he's got it with ease for out number one. Did have a, a cool Cal Ripken story. Grew up just north of West Palm Beach, so the Braves used to spring train in West Palm with the Expos, yep. by the way. So uh, Pedro and, of course, Maddox and Glavin and Smoltz and everybody else. But Cal Ripken came one day and probably for an hour signed everybody's ball and uh, there was a special Cal Ripken baseball that came out and I got that autograph on it but at the same day maybe even better you know I thought what what can top Cal Ripken autograph I'm walking through the backfields and all of a sudden doing a photo shoot is Christy Brinkley and I was like how am I going to get something signed by Christy Brinkley and you know back then you didn't have cell phones to get a quick picture or anything else yeah. but I have a bat that I had bought from the store, a cracked bat, to Jeff with a heart, Christy Brinkley. Might be the only Christy Brinkley signed bat ever. It might be. So 
That was a cool day. Cal and Christie in the same day. I'd say so. Cal and Christie. Well, Daniel Cantu's up. Gators finally were able to retire him. He popped a short his last time up. Ball and a strike from Slater. And there is a swing and a miss on a good fastball from Ryan to get in the head in the count one and two. The lights are on here at the ballpark. They are those LED lights. So tough to really even see them as they point down towards the field of play. One, two pitch is hit hard and fair down the left field line. Thomas couldn't even react. And it's going to hit right below the 321 sign. Shellnut has it. Here comes a relay throw. They're going to try to get the runner at the plate, but it's tardy. And the leadoff hit by pitch. Tibbs comes all the way around to score, and you saw the speed right there from the Seminole right fielder, and the Seminoles now lead it by three. Well, he blew right through the stop sign. The stop sign was up at third base and just raced by. Two hands held upward to stop, stop, stop. And it wasn't close by any means, and Kevin O'Sullivan's on his way out of the Gators' dugout. Well, the Gators are not liking Daniel Cantu. The first game in Gainesville, Cantu was three for three. He walked twice. He was on base five times. Threw ten pitches and allowed one hit and a run. Unearned. Dingus is the DH 0 for 2 tonight. And we'll see if Purnell can make him 0 for 3. As Cantu gets his lead from second, still only one out of the inning. And the first pitch is inside on a fastball. Yeah, Purnell's been better of late. The unearned run against LSU, he's actually not given up an earned run over his last four appearances. And that dates back to Florida State, when you know it. Through nine pitches and he got a strikeout in one inning of work back in Gainesville against the Seminoles. Yeah, he's been really good against Florida State in his career as that is a swing and a miss on a fastball. Well, I don't see Purnell blow by many guys, but he did there. Yeah. Purnell has thrown 10 and a third career innings against Florida State, allowing five hits and no runs while striking out 13. So there's just something about Florida State that Blake Purnell likes. And again, we're having an issue with the uh, the pitch comm here. And David Kopp is going to get the backup and go give it to Blake Purnell. Looks like he got he had to take off his hat to. He's got to pull it out of the band, the hat band on yep. the inside. But he looks like he got a fresh haircut. Looking sharp. Blake was asking me all about the Gators and SEC tournament and NCAA tournament. He's a big basketball fan. Yep. He's like, can we have Zion pulling for one more year? I said, Blake, even <laughs> I can't help you on that one. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to get Walter Clayton back. Yes. Certainly. We'll see what happens with that. All right. Let's see if it works. Either way, Purnell's going to get ready for the 1-1 pitch with one out here in the inning, and it's way off the plate. Seminoles now lead it 6-3. to three. They've got nine hits, and we only play in the top of the fifth inning. It's a Seminole offense that has been destroying baseballs all year. They had 12 runs on 13 hits in the game in Gainesville just a couple of weeks ago. 2-1 is inside for ball three. You ever seen a guy... Arches back and put his belt buckle toward the ball? No. That's what he did. He's trying to be like the Matrix, dude. I guess so. He's got the advantage in the count. Which a 303 hitter, and this one is fouled off. Chopping wood on that swing. That yep. was a late guess. So Purnell's fastball has been good to Dingus. We'll see what he gets here. He's got the uh, the orange bat, as Sean mentioned. He's got the, the yellow shin guard. 3-2 pitch is chopped to short. On two hops, Shelton has it, sets his feet, and the throw is chin high to Kags for out number two. A strong play there by Shelton. I know that seems somewhat routine, but that's not, especially with that runner heading for sec or uh, holding at second base. You've got to check him, and I thought it was key what you said there. He set his feet after having to move and approach the baseball in that manner. And... Sure enough, that's exactly what Kevin O'Sullivan wanted to do, Jeff, was, hey, I need Blake Purnell to come in and get this right-handed hitter, and then I'll go. Bless you and looked good. All right, so they turn Drew Ferro around. He'll hit as a right-handed hitter. 
And the first pitch is chopped to the left side. Shelton has it again on the on the run. Long throw, and it's in time. So if that's the only pitch that Menendez throws, it was a good one. Gets the ground out and a couple of 6-3 out there for his second inning of work. Freshman from Jesuit High School had a nice first inning. Got three ground balls to the left side of the infield. Here's Tanner Garrison, and the first pitch to him is high for ball one. Hey, Gators are home this weekend, but I just want to let you know I'm questionable for the weekend. Uh-oh. You said it's Tuesday, right? Yeah. Well, there's $1.1 billion on the line tonight. Oh, man. And if I hit that, yeah, you're I'm, out. Be, I'm, que I'm questionable for the weekend. <laughs> TBD. Yeah, that's, that's well worth throwing five bucks on. Here's Tanner Garrison's 1-1 and another breaking ball. They've thrown Tanner a lot of breaking balls tonight. He popped up to the third baseman his first time. Abraham's done a nice job of throwing strikes here coming in. And another breaking ball is fouled off. I feel a little guilty, by the way. Here's why. Don't you love minor league baseball? Our broadcast booth, Jeff, is actually also doubles as some guy's office. <laughs> Literally. Yep. Like right behind us is, sure enough, this, this guy's work set up. It's his office. And he was in here earlier. I didn't even introduce myself. Well, he, he, had, he had AirPods in, so yeah. you tried to talk to him, and he, like, ignored you. Like I just walked into his office and said, hey. We, need, know, we need a spot. <laughs> Now the one-two pitch, and it's short hops home plate, so Garrison lays off of it. I don't think there's any doubt that Garrison has obviously made himself the front-line catcher for the Gators. If the bat starts to roll, we get closer to a conversation you and I have all the time. How many tough outs can you put in your nine each night? Yep. Trying to be a tough out here as he has worked the count to two and two, and now three and two as he lays off that breaking ball. And, and back to the point earlier, too, you look at all the teams that have been successful, especially under Kevin O'Sullivan, guys like Mike Rivera, who's at first base, uh, guys like Mike Zanino, certainly, as the 3-2 comes in, is fouled off again. B.T. Ryapel for the last couple of years. What Garrison brings is a hardness behind home plate. He's not afraid to get up in your face, yell and scream. And, you know, as good as Luke Heyman is, that's not who he is. And I think you've seen the pitching staff get better over the last couple of weeks because they've got another guy now on the field in, in doing that. There's a swing and a miss on another good breaking ball. So Abraham keeps going to that big bender and getting these Gators out. Did, did he see anything but a breaking ball in that at bat? No, one show every, me fastball. One, that was it. But you're right, and, and he's a graceful catcher, but he has that he has that edge to him a little bit. Yep. There's some gravitas with him. And he comes with being a veteran. He's a grad student. Let's not forget that. Yeah, makes a big difference. All right, here's Michael Robertson in the nine hole tonight. He sent the left fielder, Ferrer, all the way to the warning track his first time. He also did that at LSU. He sent the, the left fielder for LSU, Mac Bingham, to the warning track in his first at bat. But then he did not get a hit the rest of the way. Robertson got one start in Sunday's game. 0-1 pitch is a little slider, and that'll miss in to even up the count at 1-1. One one. Excited about seeing the Bulldogs this weekend? Yeah, always yeah, always, always fun to be at home. Gators, of course, uh, pretty successful at home as this one misses up high. But I think the, the f most phenomenal number of the success of Florida of late they won the series against LSU, of course. They've now won 21 of the last 23 series that they have played in. So despite the nine losses and a bunch of midweek ones, they're winning when they have to as Robertson swings and misses. So you're, you're building to win a series, and, and that's how you construct your, your starting pitching, everything else, and the Gators continue to do it. 2-2 pitch is down in the dirt, but Robertson went around on another breaking ball. So Abraham's arm might fall off by the end of the night because he keeps throwing breaking balls, but he's getting the Gator hitters out. It's made of rubber. 2 four, five, seven strikeouts now for Seminole pitching tonight. They had 15 
in the first meeting against the Gators. All right, two outs now for Colby Shelton and another breaking ball. That one will short hop home plate. Seminoles will shift on Shelton. Three guys to the right side of the infield. And Cam Smith, even with the bag at third, but he is well over and about in the six hole. The 1-0 pitch is a little slow roller to second. Coming in to get it is Faro. He'll set his feet and have enough time to do it and still throw out Shelton in plenty of time. So that is seven straight Gators that have now been the first to hit. Sophomore from Tallahassee. He went to Childs High School, left-handed hitter. Takes a breaking ball down low for ball one. He started off his career at Alabama. That's where he wanted to go and then said, hey, I need to get back home. I like what Link Jarrett is doing in his second year as he fouls this one off down the left field line. And give a lot of credit to, to what Link Jarrett's been able to do. It was not a good first season by any means. They don't make the postseason for the first time in what seems like a million years. And he knew he had to reconstruct the team, find some different guys, brought in some great transfers. We're seeing that with Cantu and, and Lodi, certainly, and this guy as well. And they're making a big impact for Florida State. It's an offense that is really tearing the cover off the baseball. And I made some changes on the staff, too. Yep. So, I mean, a lot of change in his second year. Good fastball by Menendez has West in a 1-2 hole, now a breaking ball, but that is off the plate and down for ball two. And Jackson West has been a tough out tonight, partner. He yep. Two for two and a run scored. Double barrel action now in the Gators' bullpen. Couple of singles for the lefty. Last time right in between Cags and Curlin on the right side of the infield as Menendez just misses high with a fastball. West came out ranked as the third best catcher in the state of Florida and 11th catcher nationally. And he's going to get on base again as Menendez misses inside. And, you know, that's the issue that we've seen so far with Frank Menendez. You get ahead in pretty quick fashion and then start to nibble and you end up walking the leadoff man. He's got dominant stuff. There's no doubt about that, especially coming off the left side like that. Well, last inning had a batter hit by pitch. He came around to score. You don't want the leadoff walk to be similar. And speaking of freshmen, a couple of them up in that Gators bullpen, including Grayson Smith, who's ready. Alex Lodi's now the hitter from the nine hole. He squares to bunt, but pulls it back as a changeup misses well off the plate for ball one. Lodi's is 0 for 2. He has made Cade Curlin a busy man tonight. Popped up to him his first time and grounded to him his second time. As this fastball is a swing and a miss, Lodi's not squaring that time. So first one was just a show and then back to swinging away. He's got a big hole to the right side. As Curlin plays in double play depth. Squares this time, but pitches down and off the plate. Seminoles were 19-0 as Kevin O'Sullivan now makes his way to the mound again before losing the three games against Clemson. So they are still undefeated at home at 14-0. They've played three neutral site games and won all of them, but their ACC record now after getting swept is 3-3. Three and three. Yeah, look good against Notre Dame in their opening SEC series. Keep that win streak alive to start the season. Yeah, the Gators had to go through a week, a couple of weeks ago, where they played the only two undefeated teams left in the country. First one didn't go so well, second one did. Texas A&M. And you look at the SEC and all the teams still ranked in the top 25. There's a ton of them. It's a grind week in and week out. You've got Arkansas, the number one team in the country. You've got A&M, Tennessee, Florida, Vandy, LSU, all ranked. South Carolina, Mississippi State, and Kentucky all ranked. And the Seminoles come in at 17. And to this one tonight against the six-ranked Gators. But Florida State winning 6-3. There's a bunt attempt again, and he missed it. And Garrison's going to throw down to first, but just getting back in time is Jackson West. And you can see the arm again by Tanner Garrison. That made it 
pretty close play over at first base. Lodi's upset with himself that he couldn't get the bunt down, so we'll see what Link Jarrett decides to do here with two strikes. Long hold, now the 2-2 pitch. See ya. Fastball tailing away from Lodi's, and a good job. Whatever Kevin O'Sullivan said to the freshman worked. Pound that strike zone. Trust the pitch that we're calling for you. By the way, you mentioned top-ranked Arkansas. They're already done tonight. They blank Little Rock 11 to nothing. They're 20 and three now on the year. That pitching staff is insane. Gators have to go to Arkansas this year. Now back to the top of the order, breaking ball down in the dirt to Max Williams. And how about that three week stretch? At Arkansas, at Vandy, and then Tennessee at home. Yeah, you thought the first three weekends were tough? How about that? We'll do Easter weekend at home coming up here against Mississippi State. As we talked about that at Missouri, who's yet to get a win in conference play. Williams had a hit his last time up, but Menendez misses down low again, so it's two balls and no strikes. He struck out to start the game, then popped up to second before singling into left field and driving in a run back in the fourth. Seminoles got two that inning, another one in the fifth as this one is popped up out to left. Shellnut camped under it, looks up into that twilight sky, but has no problem seeing it for out number two. It's dark out there at left. I know they've got the LED lighting and all that, but it's pretty dark as opposed to right field. Mercer and Georgia rained out on this Tuesday. They're in the sixth at Knoxville. Tennessee leads Tennessee Tech 9-1. But I, I think they're just by saying those teams that these other SEC te are playing, why Florida's strength of schedule is always so high because the teams that you're playing in state are so much better than other teams from across the country. Allow me to continue. South Carolina's home against Presbyterian tonight. Cam Smith, the hitter, he takes strike one. 7 nothing Gamecocks there in the third. Kentucky's got Miami tonight. Not the Hurricanes. <laughs> of Ohio? Yes. Smith, good hitter, steps back in, and that one is a little bit high. Gators have done a pretty good job with him. He singled to start his at-bats tonight, came around to score in the three-run first inning, but then has flown to center and lined to right. Here's the 1-1, breaking ball. That gets right through the wickets of Garrison. Took a long hop, and it just slid underneath. So the wild pitch is going to allow West to get into scoring position with two outs. Yeah, not the guy you want up there right now. By the way, Miami is leading Kentucky 3-2. to two. They're in the fourth. Mississippi State on the road midweek at Samford. Just outside of Birmingham. 2-1 mm -hmm. pitch is hammered. Out into the gap in left center field. Get off the base of the wall. And it's going to be a double for Cam Smith. So a wild pitch wouldn't have mattered. West would have scored anyway. But the two out runs continue to happen for the Seminoles. And Cam Smith is now hitting over 400 with runners in scoring position. It was a remarkably well hit ball. I mean, that's 382 to the base of that fence. Got there on a rope. Well, you had first base open, so you could have been careful with Cam Smith, but if you were, then you would have still had to contend with this guy, James Tibbs. And now with first base open, the Gators are just... Well, it looked like they wanted to walk him if... Well, no, there was a ball that got loose from the opponent. Okay. And Fisher Jamison just got up and is warming in a hurry for Florida. So Tibbs in there, and the first pitch to him is down low for ball one. Tim's won the home run derby in the Cape Cod League over the summer. So you know he's got some pop, and you know he showed off in front of a lot of people up playing there, the best of the best. Good breaking ball there. He swings and misses to even up the count at one and one. He's got ten homers this year already. Hitting 388. Been on base twice, single and been hit, and he's scored both times. 
Menendez comes set, chest high. And the 1-1 pitch, breaking ball again. That one's hammered into right. Evans coming in, lays out, and he can't get it. It hits off the end of his glove. Sunglasses go flying, and the Seminoles get another two-out run as both Cam Smith and James Tibbs deliver. It's one of the hardest plays. It's right at Evans, and he's trying to lay out to meet it and knocks his chest and chin pretty good into the turf. Reaching. Well, he made a, a great play earlier to rob Tibbs of a hit, but he can't do the same this time. And Kevin O'Sullivan back to the mound once again. The seminal run, run average. Faces Jaime Ferrer and misses down low with a breaking ball. He allowed two runs. Both of them earned on two hits. He walked one, struck out two against the Seminoles back in Gainesville. Fastball this time, and it catches the bottom part of the zone to even things up at a ball and a strike. Threw against the Seminoles last year, two years ago in 2022, an inning and a third, and gave up a couple of earned runs because he walked two. 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball down in the dirt. Garrison's had to work hard back there tonight with a lot of breaking balls down there, dirtying them up. Ferrer singled his first at bat, just a swinging bunt, basically, and scored on the three RBI double. This one is fisted foul down the third baseline. We'll even up the count at two and two. Ferrer has then popped to right and popped to third. Seminoles cleanup hitter hitting 333 on the year with nine homers and 24 runs driven in. Here's a 2-2, and it's a fastball up and off the plate. So an automatic head start from Tibbs over at first, and this ball is hit to center pretty well hit. Robertson running back, still going back, but he'll catch it right on the edge of the warning track, about 410 feet away from home plate. Seminoles, though, our winner, he's done it all. So we've had two Gators win Dancing with the Stars, right? Yeah, isn't that Rossi crazy? and Emmett and Smith. Emmett. Yeah. Here's Ty Evans, two, three, and four for the Gators here. Evans getting his third at bat, singled and scored in the first, and then struck out in the third. Gators trail by five, so they've got to get going here pretty soon. Breaking ball is fouled off at home plate. Evans trying to have multiple hit games in 11 of the last 12. That's how good he has been. The average is all the way up to 391. He has hit in all but two games this year. But he's in an 0-2 hole. And another breaking ball is down in the dirt. John Abraham has thrown a lot of those breaking balls tonight. But he's been very good. In two innings, he's faced the minimum with two strikeouts. And he only threw 23 pitches to retire the Gators in order the last two innings. Evans ready for the 1-2. Breaking ball again, and he got him. That one in under the hands, and Ty will strike out for the second straight at bat. I mean, you look at your book there, Jeff. You'll notice all the Ks, but look at all the ground ball outs as well. Yep. Eight strikeouts. Cags has not been one of those. He and Curler are the only two Gators with Shelton to not strike out. And he almost gets plunked with a first pitch fastball. Cags has been good again tonight. Two hits, three run homer in the first that just snuck over the wall in left field. He the Gators are only three runs of the game. And then he doubled off the wall in right center field his last time. Fastball here is a Ball right off the end of the bat, fouled straight back to even up the count at one and one. His swing plane on that was as if he was trying to hit it into the football stadium <laughs> across the parking lot. Shift is on as it normally is for Cags. Now the one one fastball is back towards us, but over the heads. It's it's about the same percentage as Sean winning the lottery tonight as us catching a foul ball here. The 
the net comes above our heads and there is a, a roof overhang so it has to be the most perfect angle of all time if we're going to get one one two is a check swing down in the dirt so you're saying there's a chance that's right if uh, if lloyd could get mary swanson then we can get a foul ball amen and i could win 1.1 billion tonight that's right All right, two and two now to Cags. The line from the freshman and the pitch. Good breaking ball again, swing and a miss. And Cags goes down for the first time tonight. And Abraham has now struck out four of the last five Gators that have come to home plate. And that had to be perfect. A right-handed pitcher who pulls the string on that pitch. You hang it even a little bit, and it's gone. And it was perfectly executed by Abraham. Well, Tyler Shellnut trying to avoid the hat trick tonight. Struck out in the first and the third. Squares to Bun here, pulls it back and takes a breaking ball down low for ball one. Shellnut hitting 306 with eight homers and 25 runs driven in. Has just two career hits against the Seminoles. As that fastball misses up and off the plate. He was one for seven last year. He's one for seven against them so far this year. And he has struck out eight times. Here's the 2-0, and it is high for ball three. Shortstop, Lodi's is a couple of steps into the grass. Shellnut should be taken all the way, and he is. And it's a belt-high fastball to get Abraham back on track. Gators just need to get a base runner off of the freshman righty. They have yet to do so so far. 3-1 pitch is fouled straight back. Shellnut got a good swing at a fastball, just couldn't keep it in play. 34 pitches, 21 for strikes. He's been very good. Yeah. And now a 3-2 coming Shelley's way. It's a breaking ball, and it's down low. He took it. So the first base runner to reach off of Abraham is a two-out walk. And we'll see if the Gators can take advantage of it. Two walks, that's it? <laughs> that's it. That's it. The other one scored, though. Yes. Shelton to start the game. Luke Heyman's 0 for 2 tonight as he steps in. He, just like Shellnut, just two career hits against the Seminoles. Gators have won 22 of the last 27 games against Florida State. Breaking ball down low. And they've been really good here in Jacksonville. And with all the breaking balls that continue to miss, we're going to get a visit to the mound now by the Seminole pitching coach. Mike Aposi looks like he's wearing a track suit the way he's adorned tonight in the garnet on garnet. Seminole's got three in the first. Gators answered with three of their own. And then after a couple of zeros, Florida State has scored... 2-1-2 two, and two over the last three innings while the Gators just keep hanging zeros. Gator fan Steve Spurrier's head beer coach, 1966 Lager, is available at Condren Family Ballpark and in most retail stores in North Central Florida. Just ask for it. Made by Gators for Gators. Please drink responsibly. Both these teams are home this weekend. And we talked about the Gators being home. Louisville will come to Tallahassee. Said it right. Louisville. Louisville. It's kind of a syllable and a half. <laughs> All right, Heyman back in, ready to go. We'll see if he gets a fastball. He does, and he grounds it out to the shortstop. Easy play for Lodi's, who will just flip to Faroe at second base covering. Doing part to this guy at the plate, Cantu. Swinging, first pitch, deep fly, out to right. Evans to the track, to the wall. Gone. Home run. Daniel Cantu, what a night for Cantu. He has driven in five 
including a solo home run here to begin the seventh inning. Two doubles and a home run. This the second of the year for Cantu. 9-3, Florida State. He is just destroying Gator pitching. Three hits a couple weeks ago, three more tonight, and he was just sitting dead red on that fastball in those red unis and put it way over that 16-foot wall. One pitch, one run here in the top of the seventh. Now Dingus up on the right side, and Fisher Jamison deals outside, 1-0 the count. 0 for 3 is Marco Dingus, the designated hitter. Batting 299, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Waved at a breaking ball by Jamison. Activity again in the Gators bullpen. Grayson Smith up for the second time. Swing and another miss by Dinges. One ball, two strikes. Infield's back. It remains the way it started tonight. Thomas at third. Shelton at short. Curlin at second. Cags at first. Swing and a fly ball. Into center, Robertson to his left is there to make the catch, one away. So 0 for 4 is Dinges. 9-3 now in favor of Florida State. Ringing the register here on the Gators, and these two teams will play one more time. That'll be on April the 9th at Tallahassee. Here's Drew Farrell, the seminal second baseman. He homered earlier tonight. One of the wind-aided homers. We've seen one on each side. Swinging a sharply hit ground ball, backhanded by the second baseman, Curlin. Whips it over to first, two gone. Well, good job there by Curlin. Going to his right. He does backhand a lot of balls, and the, the throw was perfect. Ball scooted on this infield. Zach Cronin on the Gators coaching staff was telling me, this is my first time to this ballpark, he said this is the best this field has looked in years. It plays pretty fast in the infield. And then it's just, you know, acres and acres of room in this outfield. Jackson West at the plate, takes strike one. Right versus left here, West has reached all three times. He has singled twice, and he walked and eventually scored in the sixth. And he ropes one into center field. This will get down for a two-out base hit. So you have been able to get West out tonight at all here in the eighth spot. And now the nine-hole hitter, the shortstop, Alex Lodis. Yeah, it just shows you the impact of the freshman to this lineup. Cantu on base three times, now West four times. Well, just four pitches. Get him some work here out of the bullpen. He is in relief for Fisher Jamison, who went one inning. Two hits, a run, it was earned. He's responsible for a runner at first. Two outs, nine three Seminoles here in the top of the seventh inning. First pitch from Smith misses outside for ball one. Lodis is 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out his last time up. So first there was Philpot, and he is the pitcher of record, having given up five runs all learned and three and a third inning of work. Then came Ryan Slater, followed by Blake Purnell, Frank Menendez, Fisher Jamison, and now Grayson Smith. The 1-1. Just missed the outside edge. Harrison tried to frame it up. Now two balls and a strike, and... Grayson will circle the mound and climb back up from the backside. Kang's holding the runner on at first. That's West, the catcher. Kicking a pitch. Swing and a high fly ball into left center field. Robertson and Shellnut converging. Michael wants it. Oh, almost overplayed it, but makes the catch. And that retires the Seminoles here in the top of the seventh inning. Third time tonight here in the seventh. Right-handed hitter, and the first to him on the way. Missed high for a ball. Smith at third, Lodi's at short, Ferro at second, Cantu at first, and Cantu is almost where the second baseman should be. Swing and a miss. Big, long swing by Curlin there. A one ball, one strike, and the bender's been the problem here for these Gator hitters tonight. Abraham has thumbed it in there all night here in relief. The next swing and a rope just foul down the third baseline. Curlin yanked that one down quickly to the back end of the Seminole bullpen. And it's typical, a lot of throughout the, the 90s, early 2000s, you had Jamie Shoup as the pitching coach under Mike Martin. They, they threw a lot of breaking balls. 
almost flipped it. About 70% breaking balls. Feels that way tonight, percentage-wise. Pitch to Curlin in the dirt, swing and a miss. Dug out by West, down on strikes is Kate Curlin. He's 0 for 3. Make it five strikeouts now for John Abraham. Yeah, so now every Gator has struck out except for Colby Shelton at the top of the order. Yeah. Thomas struck out to start the second. He's 0 for 2 as he steps in on the right side. They're trying to see if this lineup would stay hot after run ruling LSU on Sunday. Been a bit of a power outage tonight. First pitch to Thomas. Guess what? Breaking ball in there for a strike. He's got kind of a bit of a sharp slider, and then it, another breaking ball that works more as a changeup to some of these right handed hitters, especially. Big differential in speed. That one is patiently waited on and then yanked foul down the left side. Thomas waited as long as he could. He was still out in front of it. So nothing in two to the Gators third baseman. Gators in those dazzling home whites tonight with the Florida script across the chest. Abraham turns and delivers the 0-2. Just missed the outside corner. That's a gutsy take by Thomas. Mm. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, really good pitch. Great spot. Mike Rivera is always in the first base coach's box. Taylor Black over at third. The one-two on the way to Thomas. Down and away. Dale evens the count here, two-two. Tanner Garrison, the catcher for the Gators, in the on-deck circle to our right. Full wind up and the 2 2. Low. And that makes it full. That's exactly where Jackson West, the catcher, wanted it. They're back on the infield all the way around. Outfield pretty much straight away. Shallow and center is Tibbs. Three twos, ball four. That's low as well. So one out walk. And Dale Thomas is aboard for the first time tonight. And I, I get it. You're you're throwing breaking balls and you're getting outs, but you already got one. And then you throw back-to-back -back breaking balls when you you get behind in the count. You're up six runs to a guy that's hitting under 200. Yeah, go like, after him. Go after him. Uh, I mean, what are we doing here? Well, I mean, we as in them, sure. Yes, yeah. them. What are they doing there? Tanner Garrison up on the right side. Speaking of breaking balls, his last at bat, he ended up striking out. He saw a show-me fastball and then all breaking balls after that. That's a strike on the outside corner. That might be the straightest pitch Garrison's going to see here again in the seventh inning. 9-3 Florida State. Hitters out hit 13-3 tonight. The pitch. Got a piece of it. Squirts it foul toward the on-deck circle where Michael Robertson is waiting. We're down to the eighth spot in the lineup right now. Thomas leads it first. He's got a stolen base this year. Only attempted two. Decent lead. And Abraham wiggling into the stretch. Here it comes. Low, and Garrison holds up his swing. They do appeal to the first base umpire. That's Hank Himenen tonight. He says, no, sir. First base coach umpire also said safe. <laughs> the aforementioned Mike Rivera. Immediately stuck his hands out. Uh -huh. One ball, two strikes. Next to Garrison. Fouled it away. That's up over the rim of the stadium. New baseball for Abraham. Friday night, 6.30. We'll do it again on Saturday at the same time. Abbott, Easter Sunday at the ballpark. Jeff is going to wear something rather special for Easter Sunday at the ballpark, 1 yeah. o'clock on Sunday. Just wait. One-two pitch. Hit him. Garrison didn't even move. And they will award him first base. And now the Gators might have a little something cooking now as Thomas advances to second. So a walk and hit by pitch. And as Abraham's starting to run out of gas here a little bit, he's above 50 pitches in this outing. And here comes Link Jarrett. And it should be. It could be. It will be. <laughs> and, and let's he not. keeps looking down there. And a Melvin Law call go. the pen. And let's not forget the, the last two games for Florida State and the leads that they have blown. So you know that that's got to be in the back of 
Link the left foot and in and ready on the right side. How about your first Gator hit right here, Ashton? First pitch, swinging, fouled it back. Just below the barrel and it shoots back to the screen. New baseball here for Oxford. John Abraham went three and a third in relief. He's responsible for both of those base runners. And those are the only base runners he's frankly allowed. He has two walks, he's hit a batter, and he struck out five working in relief. Here's the pitch to Wilson. Just missed, came at him with a fastball. We're even a ball and a strike to the right-handed hitter. And they're looking for the double play ball up the middle with Ferro especially pinching toward the second base bag. One out on a strikeout by Curlin to start the inning. And Wilson takes a tough one on the inside edge, apparently. Who say the Gator fans here tonight? Yeah, that was a good take. Uh, I thought he did a really good job and did not get the call from Damian Beal. Left-hander peers in. Now comes set. One ball, two strikes. Checks the runner at second and comes home. Swing and he fouled it off. That's going to spin and roll to the far end of the Gators dugout on the first base side. Buddy Monroe on the play over there. Yeah. Top of the order waits here. Let's see if Wilson can't get it going. This is his fourth at bat as a Gator. Again, Oxford checks the runner at second and comes home. Fastball. Eesh. That was more of a strike than this second one that was called on Wilson. No, says Mr. Beal, and we're two balls and two strikes. Wide stance, Wilson waves the bat. Now wiggles it as he's in the ready position. The 2-2. Swing, and he tipped it into the Middle West. He's out on strikes. Yeah, that's a big swing for two strikes. Did not shorten up at all. And, and the breaking ball was up just a little bit. That's got to be one where you just punch it into right field, shorten up your swing. So two gone as a result here in the bottom of the seventh inning. That'll bring Colby Shelton and the top of the order to the plate for Florida. Down 9-3. And they will shift for Shelton to the right side of the infield. Thomas could get a nice lead here. Shelton's 0 for 2 plus a walk. First to him. Right down central for a strike. Home run number 13 on the year for Shelton would... Uh, Make this game a little more interesting here in the latter stages. The Gators do have six comeback wins this year, and Jeff already told you what Florida State did themselves this past weekend. Long way to go. And that one's fouled away into the parking lot behind us. Beautiful night here. It started at 79 degrees. Maybe not as breezy, but there's still wind blowing out toward the left field pole. Shelton can hit to all fields. He's ready on the left side. Left on left as Oxford checks the runners. 0-2 pitch. Swing, and he popped it up. Left side. Smith, the third baseman, into foul territory. That wind might push it out. Yeah, and it does. It's out of play. Off the bat, it looked like Smith might have a chance beyond the third base dugout. Mm, not with that breeze I just referenced. Yeah, it, it has really taken over a lot of baseball's here today. Yep. There's several. I mean, pitchers like it for that reason, but they don't like it for the reasons of leaving the yard. 321 down that left field line. And the uh, Tiki Terrace out there had some early action when the sun was out and that breeze was really whipping. Two home runs have gone out in that corner down there tonight, one for each side. 0 2 pitch. Swing and a ground ball just fouled on the first base side. That'll rattle around the Gators' bullpen a bit. And Shelton's hanging tough here. Again, ready to face another 0-2 count. Ty Evans would be next. You helped write that New Kids on the Block song, Hanging Tough, hanging didn't you? Hanging Tough. That's another song I used to play a lot of ballparks. Yeah. Fired up right here. Hanging Tough. I'm sure they're on tour somewhere this summer. 0-2 <laughs> pitch inside. 
oohs and ahs on that one. It was well inside. One ball, two strikes. Can you still be the new kids on the block if you're 48? Probably not. Okay. But I did see Vanilla Ice on this field here last October, so he was still jamming. You remember all the words of his songs? I do. You want me to sing it? Not right now. One, two. Swing and a foul tip again into the mitt of Jackson West. And sure enough, Brennan Oxford comes in and strikes out Robertson. All right, Max Williams, top of the seminal order. He'll hit for the fifth time and almost got hit with a first pitch fastball. Yeah, to the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal, light up a stage, I want to jump See, like a candle, dance. I got you. Go watch speak of this. How many Boom. songs did he perform? I mean, he had like three hits. Yeah, I think he, he did about four. Four. <laughs> There's a breaking ball for a strike. The, the best part, you know, he's still doing it all, and he brought up all these people up on stage, and yeah. they were they were loving it. And, you know, all people in their mid-40s were reliving the glory days. Oh, yes. 1-1 one, one pitch is chop foul, first base side. And you know there's some of you listening right now, too, that want to go get the cassette and put it in there and listen to Ice Ice Baby again. That was the only way you could – like, it was before CDs, so you couldn't even – Put it in like you had to like actually tape it if you wanted to get it. Here's a chopper to second. Curlin's got it on two hops and a nice easy throw over to Cags for out number one. Question is, you know, if you go back to that time, how long did it take everybody to figure out that the track was the old David Bowie song? Yes. I mean, I, I will you got it right readily away. admit that I didn't quite know what under pressure was until yeah. I heard Vanilla and Ice. Sure. That's I'm old enough and. Secure enough not to admit that that was a problem. <laughs> this guy's a problem. Cam Smith, really good hitter. He's got two hits tonight. He's hit the ball hard four times. Just missed a homer his last time up. Doubled off the left center field wall. Smith, the third baseman, is hitting 449. And that splitty was almost like first pitch we saw from the LSU gymnastics coach on Sunday. Oh, that was not good. It, it didn't even hit the dirt. It was about three quarters of the way down. I thought the guys on TV handled that pretty well. They showed it, right? Oh, they did. Yeah, they showed it, and they said, boy, what is the, what is the deal with how come people can't perform ceremonial first pitches? Yeah. And I think it was Kyle Peterson who said, now, hold on, hold on. What if you had to go do a ceremonial backflip to start a gymnastics meet? How do you think that would go? <laughs> That's a very good point. Point taken. Here's a 1-1 pitch. It is a good splitty there, and Smith tried to pull the trigger and couldn't, and he'll take it on the outer part of the plate for strike two. Garrison's still trying to shake things off on his right hand, his throwing hand. That last splitty that went in the dirt caught him on the bare hand. There's a fastball. It'll miss up. Smith just let it go by. Here I was poking a little fun of Vanilla Ice. Elton John turned 77 yesterday. Did he really? 77. Wow. And I probably just saw him a couple years ago. 2-2, two, two, got him, but it also got through the legs of Garrison, and there's no way with this big backstop that Garrison's going to be able to throw him out. So just like the Gators got a run, the third run in that Saturday game against LSU, it was a strike him out, the wild pitch, and nothing the catcher could do. You're not kidding. There's 65 feet behind that plate to the backstop here. There's not a lot of room in foul territory down each of the lines, but there's a ton behind the plate. And now James Tibbs gets to hit again. First pitch is that splitty down low for ball one. The Seminoles have only struck out three times tonight. And one of them is on base. Yeah, pretty crazy. Tibbs not one of those. He's been on base three times. Well, that one will be down in the dirt. Garrison is earning his scholarship tonight. He's getting beat up by a whole bunch of baseballs down in the dirt from these Gator pitchers. Now the 2-0 pitch and a good fastball there. That'll be at the knees for strike one. Florida has used a ton tonight. Smith is the sixth different arm. Philpott started, ended up not having... A good line, but he looks pretty good, just like that fastball did. Blew it by him for strike two. And you could tell Tibbs was anticipating something else. So the freshman right back in the middle of the rubber. 
comes set. And the 2-2 pitch is drilled into center field. He sent it right back where it came from. Tried to sneak another fastball by him. The new center fielder, Jalen Guy, is in there. And now they've got Tibbs hung up at first base. He took a wide turn. Throw back to Cags. And he's going to be safe. Shelton waited too long to throw it to Cab. Tibbs dove back in there and actually got Cags in the knees. Knocked him down. But he never was able to tag him. Tibbs was shaken up. Caglione appears to be okay. And a trainer's going to come out and check on Tibbs. And again, that collision with Caglione is like, well, it's like running into a pillar. And Kevin O'Sullivan is going to make sure that Caglione's okay, which he's shown no signs of being shaken up on the play. That's two really big guys and two really good players. Yeah. Right there. So fortunately, everything's all right. And I'm a little surprised that Smith didn't try and score from third. Well, it looks like Tibbs is all right. And the, the trainer has a responsibility of carrying back the armor that Tibbs wears. <laughs> He's, He's got backpack. like four different things that he's got to carry back after Tibbs takes it off. So now Jaime Ferrer with the Gators already down six here in the top of the eighth inning. Well, they just went to one too many fastballs. They threw three straight fastballs to Tibbs, and he drilled it. Ferrer singled his first time, but 0 for his last three as he pops this one foul right behind home plate. That is a souvenir. I think a good word to describe Florida State right now, Jeff, is relentless. They've scored almost 100 more runs than their opponent this season. So up to the minute tonight, 276 runs scored. Here's a grounder to Thomas. He'll go down and get it, get to his feet. Only play is the first, and he makes it. Good stretch by Cags on the other end. The runner does get to second. Tibbs advances, but Smith can't move. And a good defensive gem by the Gator third baseman keeps us a 9-3 game. Boy, no doubt about that. Not, yeah, not only the out, but keeps the score the same. That ball was... Uh, Absolute laser down toward Thomas. It froze Smith on the bag there at third for a moment. Dale even looked at second. Can I get the lead runner that way? And then fired one over to first to get out number two. And now maybe one of the wisest moves of the night, <laughs> intentional walk to Daniel Cantu. Yeah, by far the uh, the smartest thing that's been done so far. Cantu with five ribbies tonight. Two doubles and a homer. And with first base open, they say, hey, put him on to face a guy that is hitless tonight and Marco Dingus, and he'll take strike one. Yeah, 276 runs scored for the Seminoles. Their opponent, 168. That includes the three by the Gators tonight. Yeah, to compare that where the Gators are, just 185 on the season yeah. for Florida. They're relentless. They don't, I mean, like I said, they've struck out three times tonight. One reached on a, on a wild pitch. Crooked numbers all over the box score here. Smith back to the windup and misses off the plate. Florida State had 13 hits in Gainesville. They've got 14 here today. There's nobody in either bullpen. 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Dingus not close to it. They've scored three times with two outs tonight. And you're hoping that stays at three here. Dingus and Lodi's at the bottom part of the order, the only two Seminoles to not reach base tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch well off the plate on that splitty. Dingus does not have a hit this year with the bases loaded. So now the merry-go-round will start. Everybody's going to be on the move for the 3-2 pitch. There they go, and the pitch is not even close. Way off the plate, and Smith walks in a run, the 10th for the Seminoles tonight. He still made the right move, intentionally walking Cantu. Yeah, you had to go yeah. with that matchup. Just got to throw a guy strikes that does not have a hit tonight. Now Drew Ferro, he'll take a fastball inside for ball one. So the Gators now trail by seven. 
The last time that the Gators lost here in Jacksonville to Florida State, 2015. This ball is hammered deep down the right field line, and it's an absolute no-doubter. Second bomb of the night for Drew Ferro. This time a grand slam. And the Seminoles have blown this thing open here in the eighth. A no-doubter, and it was center cut for Drew Ferro, who again came into tonight's game with one home run and 11 RBI. He now has three home runs <laughs> and 16 runs batted in. Five tonight. Mm. So since getting the second out, the Dale Thomas dazzling play at third. Intentional walk, walk, grand slam. Now Jackson West, who has been a beast tonight. Been on base all four times, three singles and a walk. And that has brought his average up to 378. That went a little bit low. And it's 2 0 to number 2 0. Florida's in danger of going 3 and 5 midweek. So it's now 3-0 to West. And there's a strike right through the heart of it. Three one is right through there for strike two. Fastball on the inner part of the plate. Seminoles are hitting 385 tonight. They're 15 for 39 in the game. Time is called at the plate. And the 3-2 pitch again is hit pretty well out to right. Evans drifting back. He's in that little cavern out there. And just shy of the wall, he will haul it in to retire the side. The first time that West has been retired to the night. But it's one for three. Got things started with a single, but then struck out in the third and again in the sixth. Seminole pitching tonight has 12 strikeouts after having 15 in the game in Gainesville. All right, here's Russell. First pitch is wide on a fastball. He's one for 13 on the year. He has made three starts. Gators have tried to utilize him a little bit as one of these youngsters. Also, the guy on deck trying him in the outfield in Hayden Yost. He'll hit for Cags. Gators with just three hits tonight. And as Ke Russell swings and misses. And Cags has two of them. Yep. Yeah, the least amount of hits that the Gators had. This year is the Friday night game at LSU. They only managed four that night in the loss. One two pitch is a breaking ball down. But then the Gators really rebounded nicely. They got eight hits on Saturday. And, and a lot of those came late. Florida had four hits through seven innings Saturday. And then came all the way back and then got the 13 in run ruling LSU. There's a swing and a miss. Good fastball tailing away. And Russell is retired. Knowles have the Gators number. I mean, it's kind of the flip of last year's script in a lot of ways. Yeah, you're, you're looking at a Florida State team that is in position to go 20 and 3 on the year, 4 and 0 in neutral site, 14 and 0 at home, or they'll be this weekend against Louisville. That number 17 ranking is going to start to come down for the Seminoles. Yeah, it's a good ball club. There's strike one to Hayden Yost. Yost 15 at bats on the year, two hits. Both of them are doubles. Had a big double early on in his Gator career down in Miami. Breaking ball there is strike two. 
It's a double punch for Damian Beal, the home plate umpire. He doesn't stick out just one arm. He brings that left arm up as well. He looks like he's ready to go sparring with that left-handed hitter. There's a breaking ball tapped over to Mike Rivera, whose kid just turned 11 months while he was at LSU. Trying to remember the series last year. Do you remember the, when his daughter was born? Yeah, we'll have to go back and yeah. look at the schedule. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball is a little high. He did not go around, says Jason Bradley, the third base umpire. You know, all the measurables here for Florida State. We talked about the record and everything else. You pointed out earlier that came into the game tonight, batting 344. Their slugging percentage is over 600. 44 home runs. The pitching numbers as well. The staff ERA coming into tonight, 4.03. With how many strikeouts now tonight? 13? So that's 288 strikeouts to 110 walks. Yost avoids another one as he fouls back that fastball. And they've only committed 12 errors. They're fielding a 984. So, you know, again, it, pick at the schedule a little bit. Pick at the, the weekend at Clemson. They get swept, and they blow two monster leads. Uh, this is a team that. Yeah, going to be a force to be yeah. reckoned with. Back to hosting a regional. Chopper to second. Easy play for Faro. An underhand toss over to first, and the Gators. Now down to their last out. We believe. We believe. Or we're led to believe. Yes. Do we believe? We've been led to believe. <laughs> Shell not supposed to hit, but he won't either as the third pinch hitter of the inning comes in for the Gators. It's Brody Donay. BP does not make a star, but I will say this. Brody Donay is BP today, star-like. Yes, with that wind blowing out to left, I can imagine how good it was. Fouls back a first pitch fastball. Donay hasn't had a ton of opportunity of late, but he struggled in his opportunity earlier in the season. This will be the 13th game he's appeared in, and he's just 9 for 40 at the plate. He has struck out 18 of those 40 at bat, so yeah. almost half. That's been his issue, and... Why the playing time hasn't been there as SEC play has started. Here's the 0-1 to him. It's a breaking ball, a little bit low. And that'll even up the count at a ball and a strike. Gators won in Jacksonville last year 7-5. 2022, they won 6-3. 1-1 one, one pitch is in there for strike two. 2019, they won 4-2. 1-0 in 2018, 4-1 in 2017, 3-2 in 2016. A lot of really close games. There hasn't been really any blowouts like this of late. Here's the 1-2 pitch, and it's a pop-up. Right side of the infield now drifts into foul territory and will... Come all the way back and be caught right hit up the, against the tarp. It hit the net, I thought. No, I think it came back at the very end, and with that pretty spectacular catch on the tarp, that's going to do it. And there will, in fact, be a 10-run mercy rule in this one. So the Gators' mercy and 10-run rule, LSU on Sunday, and then a couple of days later, Florida State turns around and does it to them here in Jacksonville as the Seminoles win this one tonight, 14-3. to Now they were relentless, Florida State was, and Alex Philpott got in trouble early. They had the three runs in the first, then the game kind of settled in. But then Florida State scored in every...